A big 1050. We had one of those, didn't we? Yeah. The big old dozer. That would make you a nice service truck there, bud. You have to keep it that shiny, though. Alright, welcome to the 2023 Con Expo Show in Las Vegas. Got myself Clinton and Hunters here. We're going to uh, take you guys around and see what all cool stuff's here. There's a bunch of stuff here. Kind of crazy John Deere set up this whole portable building in the middle of the parking lot. Brand new one. That P letter just doesn't make any sense. A 750P. You can hop up in there. See what she feels like, bud. Maybe in about 10 years we'll see one of these. <laughs> Look at all the people that built it. Signed it. Made in Iowa. Uh, they did change the controls up a little bit. You want to go check them out? Yeah, they're totally different. So they kind of went to the Caterpillar control system for steering. I think you got your forward and reverse on there. Yeah. It's a little bit different. You don't click it forward or reverse now. You just do it with a switch. Huh. That's the same push button starter. It smells all nice and new. Mm-hmm. A big 1050. We had one of those, didn't we? Yeah. A big old dozer. We had, uh, that's pretty cool. We got Dunder USA on there. Definitely trying to say that these are not LeBeer machines anymore. These are all John Deere. So we had one of these, a K model, what, about two years ago now? Big old machine. It's a new number, 510 excavator. It's a new 210. It says prototype on it. This is a new all John Deere machine. I see some familiar controls like they had on the dozers. Okay. Oh, I got some nice stuff in there. Lights and camera up here. You what? Like their big stickers. Look at that big logos in Boston there. It is. They got it in Boston there. It's pretty crazy. Tucker's gonna be making some new decals. New 360p prototype. E drive 850. Is this electric? What's that all about? Very interesting. I got her locked up.
We've got uh, dual electric motors. Engine power plant looks like a generator of some kind. It's uh, very interesting. Be curious to see how this goes over. I know Caterpillar has a D7E and its uh, resale value is not there on it. It's got electric drive motors in it. Yeah. 850s has got a little bigger. It's one of the brand new 335P skid steers. Let's see. Um, tipping loads 11,500. 115 horsepower. Let's see, we got bogey undercarriage down there. definitely tell it's bigger. We got a 333 sitting here next to it. Yeah. Very cool. John Deere's six-way blade on there. Some new loaders. 320p backer, that's a new number. And a 210 landscape tractor. Got a 160 here. Three twenty. That's a new um, number. Must be the old three tens growing up a little bit. Got a electric three ten backhoe. power you could be like Kevin and get on the little one thirty five we messed a lot of those that's a big wheel loader nine forty four You want to stand by that tire there, bud? Yeah, like six and a half foot tall. Are you six foot tall? Pretty much. Six Thunder Creek fuel trailers. Oh yeah, I think this might be the new big boat. I've been watching this online. I'm gonna guess that one doesn't run yet. I'm gonna guess this one doesn't run. That's it's not, good, good guess. not hooked up yet. She's a prototype. Now this is interesting. We put a uh, track around the tire. Very interesting. Hunter's found him a uh, excavator, haven't you? This one's pretty quiet. Yeah, very quiet excavator. Have you figured it out? I don't know. We're it's in the um, simulator systems booth here. 
Hunter, cut and resist. Are you going to hit the truck? I hope not. May not even go in the truck, bud. It's pretty cool the seat and stuff's moving as he's jerking around, isn't it? Yeah, you can feel how heavy it is. The... You feel it hunched down? Yeah. Have you tried to move yet? So you got your, you can see your tracks are in the side. You can feel how fuck it is. Shaking the whole chair. Yeah, it's talking to me. Pretty cool. Oh. Talk a hoochie boo. We found our friends at the Halverson Boosh. You guys know we sell the uh, Halverson firewood processors. You can contact Jay, but uh, super sweet machines. You guys seen some videos of us running them. Kind of cool. I got a handheld ink printer. Concrete wood, paper. Electric spiral stump cutter. Tucker can do that for us. Yeah. Etna, the same company that makes my uh, RG trailer I got. Yeah. Got seats down there for you, bud. Think you need one of those? I'm, yeah, that'd be great. Pretty cool, ain't they? Welding machine set up. This thing's pretty cool right here. Oh yeah. Cab over Peterbilt. I am making a nice service truck there, bud. You have to keep it that shiny though. Yeah, it's torch and weld and stuff set up. Some nice stuff right there.
electric international truck. I think it's electric. <laughs> some experience with those, ain't we? The old 9 liter? Yeah. This is an electric excavator. You want that, bud? I don't mean, I don't want that. It's a Chevrolet. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. Guys, don't know we are an ITR dealer. All kinds of stuff here, don't they?
you think about the DX100? That 1000. Oh, it looks So, you guys might notice a new name here. This stuff looks familiar. It's the old Doosan equipment. They've renamed it to Devilon. Formerly it was Day. We went to Doosan. Now it's Devilon. So. Oh, it still says Doosan inside of there. Interesting. We got a Doosan loader here. So well, they've uh, brought back a couple dozers they got out here too. They did this back in the early 2000s. Interesting. Like everybody else, it looks like they've got an electric machine up there. Uh, yes, it's one o'clock, right? Look at these cutting edges bolts. I don't like that, do you? No. Those are going to get filled up and stripped out, everything else. Good on cars and stuff, but not bulldozers. A 320 electric excavator that has to come with that big thing to charge it up. You gotta have something to lift it up, too. It's craziness. Electric cat wheel loader. See that says D4 on it? Cat renumbered all her stuff. I, I told you that, didn't I? So they start with D1, D2, D3, went up. So that's like, that's the same thing as the 700 or the old D6Ks. Very confusing. Picking up some orange juice.
So hey guys, uh, you will be seeing a video coming out. We've got a John Deere 755K track loader. The older track loaders are actually made by LeBeer for John Deere. The new ones, the K-Series and on up, are all John Deere machines. That's why they look so similar back in the day, because it was just a rebranded LeBeer. You what? Okay. Do what? I said they had a C3 screen. Yeah. That's a big old crank. Yeah, definitely not small. That's way up there, bud. Yeah. That thing is humongous. You know how much it cost to move that thing in here? Yeah. How many truck bags that would be? Go stand up in front of that. This thing's huge. Crazy how big some of these cranes are. millions of dollars just to truck this stuff in here. We're in the link belt boot. Fifty thousand pound capacity, hundred foot. Trackzilla. It's got tracks on it. It's pretty cool. Something crazy, eh?
XCMG. Oh, I got some more challenge there, bud. That's there are all kinds of excavator challenges. So many companies here, I've never even heard of them. The Zoom along. Crazy, crazy. Saying he's also got a backhoe now. I didn't know that. So you guys asked a lot of questions. I got a little SY 35 excavator bought in Florida, uh, made by Sandy. Actually, he's pretty impressed with it. Did some digging and stuff with it, so nothing wrong with the machines at all. A big old truck crane. at the dressed and Lagoring booth. So Hunter has ran a TD-15C that Grandpa bought new. It's a little different than that. It didn't look like this one, did it? Not really. This is a rear entry. It's supposed to have super visibility. 
Wanna check it out? PD25 is a good machine. We've had, We've had some of those, haven't we? Yeah. The old International Harvester variants. It's basically a D8 size machine. Yeah. We'll go up there and take a peek inside. It's very interesting. Looks like it's um hydrostatic. Sitting up here in the TD16. Definitely got a lot of visibility for sure. Looks like it's set up a tremble. Pretty comfortable. Very interesting. They've changed these up a little bit. You got centralized greasing. It's nice. It's very important for me to load those trucks perfectly so they're going down the highway with a legal load. So that payload for grapple really is a huge deal for those contractors. That's pretty awesome, Alex. Thanks a lot. Bill, I see you coming in on that uh, 420XD, buddy. Yes, sir. You're going to put some, get to work here. You got a trench in the way, pal. Yeah, I got to get those pipes so long. With this new 420, we got dual mode. So, I want to cross trench real easy. Yeah. Go up to what I need to. Send out my bucket. Go right on over. <laughs> Make that look pretty easy, pal. So how would that come in handy for the operators out there on the, on the job site? So, like, I control the opposite end from the uh, face. So, like, just seeing, I control the back. Let's say I was a uh, trench in application. I'm digging with the rear. I can use this one bucket reposition. You know, Marty, I'll tell you what, our backbone loader team down there in North Carolina, building the trench and products, they're always knocking out the bar for us. Those drive through power shift transmission backbone loaders, they just literally can't be beat. Although they can be improved, and they have that inside the cab there, the new LED, LED monitor is absolutely fantastic. So let's jump over to this uh, 982. We got a little 259 out there, also pushing in. Do a little back go work for us. So I tell you, that 982 party has been a great experience for our customers. I can tell you that for sure. That's pretty cool. So we talked about the. We still give them choices within the same size class. So we give them a, a GC option. So it's a standard machine, easy to run. Uh, easy capabilities, works out beautifully for most customers. Then we have our, our traditional platform, if you will. Uh, basically, that's kind of like the performance platform. And then you can jump up to the XE. And there you're full of premium technology products. It's a great situation. Tons of assist features that I think our good friend, the uh, Root Ball, is going to help us out here. Curtis Nixon, folks, we call him Root Ball. It's not an insult, he actually likes it. So, Root Ball. Tell me about some of those smart technologies that you're utilizing on that 982 XE. Yes, sir. Thanks, Chad. Um, one of the best features on this is going to be your auto set tire. So, as soon as I initiate the file, what it's going to do is it's going to lift up my bucket for me, uh, putting some down pressure on those front tires. That way, it reduces that tire wear, uh, that excess of tire wear. And then it's also, and then it's also going to uh, help me out with my production making it easier to get a bucket load. Um, one of the other features that I'm using in here is going to be uh, payload. The payload's coming standard. We've got an advanced payload. That's going to help me out with tip-off assist. That way I'm not sending trucks down the road with a light payload or I'm not having those return trucks that go across the scale uh, and then having to dump and get reloaded. That's awesome, buddy. Appreciate that. I know that's not easy to walk and chew gum, let alone, you know, talk in front of a machine. You guys are not uh, banking it out of the park.
That 982 also is an extremely efficient machine due in large part to that continuously variable transmission, 35% better fuel efficiency, 25% lower maintenance cost. You know, you heard RuPaul talk about uh, payload in that 982, but that's not the only machine out here with payload. Actually, quite a few of them, not most, are gonna have that. The 730, you see it dumping its load right now. It can be, uh, it can be a, equipped with payload as well. It's a really good situation, Marty. Chad, tell, I kind of have an idea, but tell us, well, how does payload help our customers? Now, that's a good question. So, with payload, obviously, you want to know how much material you're moving, so that's probably the given. But another thing is, you don't want to overload your machines. Overloading your machines on a regular basis, that's going to increase the wear and tear on the machine, and honestly, it's going to reduce the longevity of the machine. So we want to make sure that we're hitting the targeted payload for that truck, or let's say you're loading it on a highway truck, you don't want him going down the road, and then he's going to get a little visit from his local peace officer uh, for being overweight. Also, then we want to make sure we're hitting production goals, so we want to make sure we're hitting that capacity. It works out beautifully. It allows our customers to hit their production goals and uh, increase the longevity of the machines. That's pretty cool. Steve, I see you in that 730, and buddy, I know, I've heard about payload. I know that there are several new enhancements and features in that truck. Which one it really resonates with you and the operators in the crowd? Yeah, definitely. This 730 is uh, world class anymore. It's got cat eject on it. It's also got a up camera on it, and it's got voice assist on it. It's really, really nice. For the operators to run these machines daily for hours and hours, they do repetitive motions. Now it's just a flick of a switch and a button, and this machine will actually set the load rate for you, raise the bed of the RPM, and then you board, you just push it off, so it lowers the back down for you. It really helps the operators out. That's super cool, and you know, It's a robot loader. Some electric bobos. Pretty cool. Electric machines, eh? Yep. Kevin size. Electric. Kevin size electric machine. This guy's gonna fire this one up. Definitely can't hear him running. You what? So I feel like I'd screw something up. On the uh, hydraulic, on the coupler, it's got hydraulic quick connects too.
got a hydraulic cylinder and it slides these out. Connects those together, that's crazy. Very interesting. Look at all the grease fittings on that bucket. the robot so starting at the top she has shoulder ab add which is this motion of the arms outwards shoulder flex which is front to back of the shoulders what we call humeral rotate so rotating around the upper arm elbow flex and then at the wrist she has all three degrees of freedom that you have so wrist rotate what we call wrist ab add and then wrist flex she also has yeah. in the in like the hand of, on the left arm of the robot she has a bounty relative to her life. She sees the stream from both those cameras in the VR headset that she's wearing. So in that way it's very immersive, very intuitive. <laughs> Unmanned Honda vehicles. Uh, so if you want to check that out, just uh, line up around here um, in about a minute or so, and we'll get going. here at the Volvo booth we actually got invited at the booth for a little meet and greet later on. 
it does everything the diesel will do, except it's electric. So hop on up. Well, Kevin's gonna be jealous. There's our there's our little cute bucket. All right, so this is this is a game where you're gonna take the center yeah. pole, you're gonna pull that out of the box part. Where he's working on that right now. And then you'll have a little little issue with the board here, but you can still play with it. Yeah, we'll play with yeah. it. But when you pull the pole out, the clock will start. You see the little paddle switches at the bottom? Yep. It triggers the system. You want to go to the far end. Go one, two, three, four, four. You see they're concentrically bigger to smaller, so it gets a little more difficult as you go on. Okay. And then when you get to the end, it'll stop. And you take the time and reset the thing. So are you back or ISO? That's how you go. It's ISO. Okay. Yep. Let's get started on the all right, so Hunter's gonna try this electric excavator out and try to set it in each one of these holes. So you got your Milwaukee tools, and you know how you can bump up the power on the yeah, impact. Right. So now we're in three. So dial the dial, and you'll go from 1100. Oh yeah. Keep on going. Keep on going. What's so the magical number we need for this game? Going. About, about 1500 will give you the speed and controllability. I can't even hear this thing running. I know, it's so quiet. Now, so now you're in like four minutes. You need to run that. So dial it back down. Get it around 1500. And what we'll do is we'll put the armrest down and you're live. And we'll get out of the way and watch you go. Okay. Oh, yeah. As soon as I leave, it starts. Yes, sir. No pressure. No pressure. Dang it, bud. One minute and one second. Beat me by 28 seconds. What did I get? One minute? One minute and one second. What'd you get? 129. Pretty good for never running one before. 
I said this dude's all remote control. So you're gonna start the machine from there and everything. Look at the top I was flashing. I got you up there. So that means that the remote has control of the machine. Now how far is the range on this? 100 yards. It's line of sight so it's right, right. probably at 100 yards. Right. But yeah. you got control of light. So you can see the rear of the work lights there. Yep. The strobe light. You see that? And the horn. horn. Up. So you got your travel there in the center. Travel, so independent. Yeah. Since we're here, you can also do just one, with one of them, you can do straight travel. Gotcha. And then you got normal boom control, boom up, up control. Open and close the travel. Crazy. You got those on the twist. That's right, yeah. Very cool. Seems very smooth, too. Yeah, it's pretty smooth. It's pretty easy to learn how to operate. Now, a guy can get in and run it manually, too, if he needs to. Right. Same. Pretty cool. It's for the application for you, uh, like demolition or hazardous material, something like that. Right. Uh, in danger zone. zone. Yeah. Yep. Very cool. Pretty cool. He's running that thing from that remote control. You can run it in there too. Yeah. Keeps an operator out of harm's way. Oh, that guy's swinging all over the place. I, I, I'd say I did pretty good. practice enough. It feels just like a regular hydraulic machine. Maybe we'll have a competition later All right, well, against yeah. the other ones. Yeah. Now you got practice. It's pretty cool. There's Parker Schnabel down there from the Gold Rush. Tony Beats is here yesterday. Of course, uh, about 10 of us YouTubers will be here this afternoon. But Parker, Parker oh, yeah. Snubble down there. Pretty cool. All right, that's a wrap on the uh, 2023 Las Vegas Con Expo. Been hanging out with a bunch of other YouTubers here at the uh, AMI booth. Very super cool guys here. But uh, hopefully you guys uh, loved all the videos and the footages and all that stuff. So. If you want to see more of this stuff in the future, let me know in the comments below. If you like it, give me a big thumbs up. Helps us out a lot. And be sure to check out all these other guys' channels over here for uh, more videos in the future. But appreciate you guys watching.